Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Vino Optic Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about masks and a problem that people don't tend to talk about with masks, and that is that it obscures your ability to see your own body and your own lower visual field and thereby enhances your risks of falls. But before talking about it, let's just back up a little bit and talk about what your eyes are for. And one of the main reasons that we have eyes is in fact not just to see the world. If you wanted to just see the world, you could have, let's say, a single eye in front of your head, and that would allow you to see everything out in front of you. The problem is that you also want to see your own reaching appendages, which for most animals is actually their muzzle. That's their main hand. And the problem is that if you had just one cyclops eye behind your muzzle, well, you might have a reasonable view of your muzzle, but the problem is that that muzzle would thereby block the world that you're trying to see. So one of the main reasons that we have two eyes at all, that we have binocular vision, is that, so that an animal can have a great view of the muzzle. In fact, it gets a sort of a God's eye, both sides view of the muzzle. But what the muzzle blocks from the right eye's point of view, well, the left eye gets to see that, and vice versa. Having binocular vision is fundamentally, it's for the, its most fundamental reason is so that you can see your hand, your muzzle for most animals, and yet see through it, because when both eyes are open, in fact, you can see your nose, well, your right eye sees sort of the nose from the right side, and actually you can see it as semi-transparent in your visual field, but you see through it to the world beyond because your left eye has that view and it's fused into one image. Much of the design of your visual system and the way that your eyes and face are structured are so that you can see your own body and how it interacts with the world. That's crucial for our acrobatic behavior. Not only is it crucial for reaching and for our muzzle for reaching, but in fact, you can actually see your own face in terms of, let's say, where your cheeks are so that you can get visual feedback for emotional expression, something that I talk about um, in my earlier book, uh, uh, Human 3.0. And in fact, the earlier stuff, the more general stuff and why we have binocular vision, the evolution of binocular vision is, is in one of my earlier books called The Vision Revolution. But more generally, even seeing your own faces, like I talk about in Human 3.0, for the purposes of titrating your emotional expressions so that you can say with emotional expressions the very careful things that you need to say as a social animal, you see your own face and the own structure of your eyebrows and cheeks. This is why, for example, football players have black paint on their cheeks. Why do you think they have black paint on their cheeks? It's because light reflects off of those cheeks into your eyes, into your retina, and blinding you. By putting black there, it reduces that. But that just means that your cheeks are visible to you. Now, they're not usually consciously visible, neither is your nose typically, but it's in your far visual peripheral field. And you're subtly unconsciously aware of this uh, uh, and, and, and utilizing that feedback to get uh, uh, the kinds of um, emotional expressions in this case or bodily behavior that you need. Now, another thing that's in your lower visual field, which is I want to move to now, is the rest of your body. Often when you're moving around, much of the time, your own feet are within your visual field. They're in your far lower visual field and you're not consciously paying attention to them, but you're getting that visual feedback and that's what allows you to have great uh, 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 behaviors and acrobatic behaviors that we take for granted. You lose that and suddenly you'll be tripping all over yourself. I had to go to the hospital the other day and walk all over the, over the hospital and I had it on for a longer period of time than I usually would from the hostess to the table let's say at a restaurant. And I was very, I felt very handicapped relative to my normal self. And if you have people who are already particularly handicapped, older folks who are a little bit infirm, they are much higher risk of falling. Everybody's at a higher risk of falling. Ooh, who do I have here? We've got pistachio the parrot flying, flying by. In fact, 650,000 people die of falls each year worldwide. And, uh, and uh, millions are in the hospital by virtue of falls. Falls are not, are not, are not a small deal. So when you put this on, notice, you just might think, well, how can this really bother you very much? But you can see that it's blocking my ability to see down. I can't see anything. It's blocking, not only is it blocking my feet, the earliest part of my visual field in terms of direction that I can see is all the way out around here. So the entire visual field, this far and below, in terms of an angle, that far and below is all cut off. This is not only preventing me from seeing myself, which I can ultimately see in my lower visual field, but just preventing me from seeing approaching sidewalks and tons of things that are down there below that we have to be able to see to have the kinds of safe behavior that we normally take for granted. All of these exquisite design features that we have for our bodies, the way that we breathe, the cardiovascular, the kinds of 
just uh, the way that the, the aerosols and the, and the move away from our body when we normally breathe, breathe compared to when there's a mask. All of these things have to be taken together in trying to ask whether masks are a good idea. And falls are a big deal for folks that are old and no one is measuring these things. And uh, that's your Optic Science Moment.